Get your Davis wrap it up. Look at this, the Draco on sale right now. Buy one. We're going to fly this right now. And you guys are hopefully going to enjoy watching me fly it. It's kind of a monster, so you got to be a little bit careful when you carry it around. The thing is just gigantic. Two meters of pure delight. Absolutely scale. 7,000 success is what we're doing. Obviously, this one has thrust reverse, which is really cool. Just be careful about that tail wheel when you're backing up, especially if you go up hills and stuff. Without further ado, 7,000 success. Absolutely gorgeous, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna change the lights here in a second for you. Just kind of taking it easy here so we can show you the different light configurations. Lights off. Now have lights simple. See that tail light? Very helpful. Okay, then we're gonna go to the setting I like where we have the strobe on the front. So cool. There's 100% throttle. We're gonna do a little upside down flight performance for you. Didn't have quite enough elevator to do what I wanted there, but we're okay. Look how beautiful that is though. Looks ultra realistic. Just kind of taking it easy, about 30% throttle here. Absolutely wonderful plane. You guys need to get one of these for yourself. Let's go into the bowl here. Sorry, camera crew, trade your sides. We'll do a figure eight here and then come back around. Being real easy on the throttle, there's a little bit of wind that's hard to tell. Okay, out of the flaps here. I was in landing flaps there. Look at that power, it's just crazy. See the lights on the bottom, mm -hmm. so cool. Let's show you the lights on the bottom again, guys. You see the lights? That is just so realistic looking. Love it. Look how slow you can fly this thing. Just absolutely phenomenal. Okay, full landing flaps here. Coming in for a pseudo final. And a little thrust reverse just to slow it down. Part of the reason I went off the runway there was to demonstrate it does grass just fine. And then I'll show you one where I intentionally stay on. I want to get onto the mains here. There you go, on the mains. She likes to get flying though, that's for sure. Especially with the 7006S, that's one of the biggest loads you can fit into this thing. In our experience full landing flaps here, we'll see. We'll show you one on the runway here. Look at that awesome landing. That's how you know you're skilled. You don't even hit, you don't even hit the runway. Look at that, so sweet. Okay, here we go. We're gonna try that again, except you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna go up and pretend like it's an actual airplane and flight to the, to the landing point. The Draco is so capable, you kind of forget you still need to fly it once in a while. Full rudder action almost. Keep it from stall, full landing flaps here into the ground effect, and then land it. Woo! Touch and went. 7006S. This thing's supposed to fly on 4S. I wouldn't fly it on 4S myself. I feel like it kind of demands the power in my opinion. If you don't have a 6S pack and you were looking for an excuse to get one out of the takeoff flaps there, or full throttle. If you were looking for an excuse to get into 6S, look no further than the Draco. Just absolutely wonderful. Guys, look how good the LEDs are. Full landing flaps. Now, some of you guys, you ask a lot, what's better, Carbon Z Cub, Draco, or Carbon Z Cessna 150T? That is a very, very fair question. And the answer to that question is, it depends on what you're after. This plane is a scale aircraft. It is extremely detailed. It is one of the better. Do you guys see the instrument cluster lit up? Let's do a slow pass here. You stay right where you are there, camera crew. Okay. Want to keep you safe as we do this okay so we'll just do a nice slow pass we'll bring it into a little bit of a stall there 
Look at the instrument cluster as it goes by. It's lit up. Yep. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. So cool. And yes, they've got the simulated Mike Patey in there too. Tailwind with us right there. So as you can see, in this beautiful sunset scenario, you just have wonderful presence. I hate listening to her. She is so annoying. When she starts giving you telemetry warnings, I'm like, I just want to enjoy this beautiful experience. And she keeps telling me about the amps and the current. And I'm like, I don't care. Just shut the thing off when it won't go any longer. 63 amps. Oh, dapo, do, da, do, da, do. You can shut that off, by the way. Look at that. And some people have talked about putting uh, pneumatic tires on the Draco. I felt like the Draco had some of the better stock wheels of the group of them. I'd like to see pneumatic tires, but I'm actually quite satisfied with these tires. I think they work good. They look fine. Now, don't forget this plane is heavy. You do have to use throttle. You have to use power. So don't think you're gonna go around slow boating like you do with the Carbon Z Cub. Man, that looks so gorgeous. And then the braking is why you see the prop spinning slowly. When you set up reverse thrust, you have to do that so that it gets the motor ready for thrust reverse. So it's 104 Fahrenheit, huh? Well, I'm pretty sure solder's not gonna melt at 104 Fahrenheit, so stop telling me about it, lady. <laughs> Telemetry is such a good thing anymore, guys. We have, we have it so much better than we used to just a few short years ago. The telemetry is more useful. You can set up audible alarms, which is really the way to go. Can you take a step toward the center of the driveway, please? Thank you, perfect. Okay, here we go, full landing flaps. Now we were into the, just the takeoff flaps. Just love it, guys. What a beautiful plane. I do feel like it behaves more like it should on the off-road configuration sort of set up there. As soon as you get it on the ground, if you're on asphalt or pavement, I feel like this thing doesn't do as good as it could. Changing my lights. That was my timer. We're obviously not done flying because that would not be like my style to quit right now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get these lights to go back on. Okay, full up elevator. Get that thing off of the tail wheel and then up in the air. There she goes. Into the takeoff flaps, just let it relax into a better attitude. Okay. Okay, let's do a pass on the inside, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, just stay right there if you could. Oh, so now if you guys were wondering, I also did just fix this plane because I just crashed it earlier. If you want to watch the crash, everybody loves watching me crash. Then just stay tuned after the end of this video and you can uh, watch what I had to do and you can see what I did stupidly. And if you enjoy watching me crash, just give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to smash that like button, guys. It will help the algorithm to not punish us quite as bad for our long unbox videos. Do you hear this chick just going on and on and on? Oh, it's so annoying. So I'm gonna go in here to audio vents. I don't know if it's telemetry warnings. And it's gonna be the smart ESE, double click. How about we just do inhibit? And then let's do smart ESE again, active, inhibit. 
And then let's do a smart battery. And let's just do an alarm for, let's do inhibit, and then let's do inhibit. I think that's all we need there. Okay, because she was driving me nuts there, guys. I don't know about you, but it was driving me nuts. Okay, so we're not dead yet. We're minute 57. Okay, so throttle onto the rough ground, no problem at all, as you can see. Let's take off here, get it off of the main, get it on the mains. Look at that absolutely gorgeous takeoff. Boy, this thing looks great in the dark, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We haven't done much dark flight with this thing, but to be honest, it's been dark so early, we just haven't been doing it much in the dark. Yeah, look at that. Keep her flying. Full landing flaps, take off flaps now, a little bit more throttle to manage. Okay, full landing flaps here. Now, also, I just wanted to let you guys know, if you want that slam down, slam down sort of appearance that you would get from a stoll performing plane, don't put a 7,000 milliamp hour pack in this. That is the heaviest pack that this thing will handle. Mm. In my experience, use a 4,000 or a 3200 6S and you will get that more stole like performance that you want. Okay, up on the mains. Oh yeah, you like that guys, that nice little bounce? Oh, I love looking at the bottom of the wing, that's so cool. Keep trying to get the attitude of the plane so you can see that better. Man, that's so good. So folks, for those of you that are at home thinking, I'd really like to have that plane, but it's been previously too expensive. Well, it happens to be on sale right now. And I apologize if you're watching this and you didn't see it until the sale was over. We honestly do not do that to torment you. And that's part of the reason that we don't ever talk about sales because we know this video is gonna be playing a lot longer than the sales running. But let me tell you something. This plane is absolutely fantastic. And if you're into scale planes, it is the plane for you. And uh, if you like the Carbon Z Cub, you also want that plane, but it is not a scale plane, not, not at all like this plane. It's just a different experience. It's a good experience. It flies a lot lighter on its feet. It's a lot more insane performance, as I would call it, rather than, you know, like pseudo scale performance. But if you like the way that this plane flies, then the Carbon Z Cessna 150T is also right up your alley. It flies a little bit heavier than the Carbon Z Cub, but it's also got lights. It's also got thrust reverse just like this. And so does the Carbon Z Cub, to be fair. But my experience is I am such a Cub lover that I get blinded by the light, pun intended, and it doesn't have lights. So I don't often find myself complaining about it, but at the same price point, you can have the Carbon Z Cessna 150T rather than the Carbon Z Cub, which does not have lights, okay? So just keep in mind, this is a great value right now. If you guys are thinking about buying this plane, it's not gonna be a whole lot cheaper than what you see here, unless of course, you have some sort of a weird coupon. What is the coupon, like Super Scale or what is Super it? Super Sale. Super Sale. Is the coupon code. Yep, and it's all over the website. So if you like miss it while you're checking out, I apologize, just follow our links. You can still use all the coupon codes. Oh, there's a bug! I saw it. First bug of the season. I wish I could hit it. Was it a bug or was it a bird? No, it was a bug. Oh. Okay, let's try this again. Man, that's fast. I was going to try to do a touchdown, but I didn't. So, folks, we don't want to bore you with more of the same, but at the same time, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, where's the crash, Brian? It's, uh, we already did it. The crash, it's in the can, so you can stay tuned and watch the crash, and then you're gonna be like, holy crap, you just did that? Yep, I just did that. And uh, you can see how I did it, what I could have done to avoid it, and you can also see what I did to fix it, which is pretty cool. So, if you guys wanna see what I did and how to avoid it, stay tuned. I am not out of power, and so the reason I land is because I wanted to give you my full attention for a quick second. See? We still have more power. So we're gonna fly for a little bit longer. Full up elevator. 
I love getting this thing off of the tail wheel because I think it looks so sweet. And I know the lighting's getting rough, so we'll just kind of take off here. Okay. Man, those lights look so good. Shut off the tail light. Take off, take off flaps there. Let's just go through the different lights. There's just nav only with just a flashing tail light and strobes on the wingtips, which would be considerably similar to like the, uh, what is that, like the timber probably? Yeah. But I mean, it just looks super realistic. It looks just, and of course the instrument clusters on. Nav lights, having four lights makes a huge difference. Three points. Okay, you keep going down, eventually they shut off. So you just got only nav lights and the tail light. So much fun. Okay, let's go back to the crazy lighting effects. There's your lights on the bottom. Remember, the Draco was designed for search and rescue by Mike Patey. Thank you, Mike Patey, for sharing this with the world. You could have kept it to yourself and we are all um, indebted to you for that, a debt of gratitude. So we really appreciate you doing that for the rest of the RC community and of course the aviation enthusiasts around the world that can now have a little taste of the action. So for those of you who are familiar with Brian Phillips RC, or maybe this is your first time being on the channel, we like to kind of push it to the limit on the packs. We could have done this in a 5006S, but we wanted to really see if we could emulate what we were doing before so that you can see how our repairs hold up. And you can see that kind of getting janked around a little bit. That's just that real subtle wind. It doesn't look like much of anything, but it's definitely there. You can see the wing shutter just once in a while. Of course, the AS3X is rock solid on this platform and you can fly it in crazy wind if you choose to do so. But one thing I can tell you is that it is a heavy plane and it is a big plane. So if you try to squeeze a big plane in a small hole, well, it's gonna create kind of a tight spot. Something's gonna give. Might be your left wing. That's what happened to me. Gosh, that is so absolutely fantastically gorgeous. Okay, gonna bring it in here. Okay. So guys, I think, I feel like, you know, we're at 3.6 across the board on those cells. This is a Gen 2 pack, so of course it's gonna auto balance, just like a Gen 1 would. But the Gen 1 one, the Gen 1 uh, smart packs don't balance quite as quick. So that's one of the trade-offs. You also have a balance lead. On a Gen 2, there is no balance lead. So if you're running in, you know, like an aftermarket um, fire booty, for instance, that would go around an EDF module or something like that. It is kind of nice to have that balance lead, but we do have uh, tap cables that you can put in the EC5 connector and then pull off some voltage. So we're not quite dead though. I think we're gonna go one more round here. Okay, so get that tail up. Look at that beautiful takeoff, guys. Such a short field too, no less. Okay, out of the flaps. Okay, on low power, we're probably gonna get to the critically low warning here pretty quick. But just to show you some higher G maneuvers, we're not trying to rip the wings off. You'll understand when you see the video. But as you can see, we're able to do all the different maneuvering. Camera crew, you wanna come back here a couple steps just to be on the safe side. Okay, full landing flaps here. Okay, slipping, slipping. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take it out of reverse thrust and back taxi it. Man, that looks so cool. Our lighting's probably going here, guys. Mm -hmm, so we it apologize. Is. It's probably pretty much gone. But man, that is so cool. And then just to refresh your memory, throttle cuts on. Just adjusting this knob, you can see there's a constant on on the tail light. You see that tail light turn on? Mm -hmm. So there's actually one more light we didn't have all the way on. That's actually on the top of the plane. Let's show them that. Right here, see it? Boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom. 
right here. See, light, 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 light. That's the only one that we weren't flying with on. Mm. And then as you turn the knob, that's 50%, eventually the, all those lights shut off. And then you can shut off the strobes and you're left with just the strobes on the wingtips. Then eventually you're left with nothing. Just the instrument cluster, if I recall. Yep, the instrument cluster's lit up, as you can see. Then we'll turn on all the lights. And then if you look at the underside of the wings, if you keep going all the way up, eventually it stops the strobe on the tail. And then you can go back to a position, which is about 75% through the range to actually get your lights to all come on. Why are you stepping back? Let's show the people here. See this? So right there. Now we go over exactly how to set this up in the unbox build radio setup. And for those of you that are new to the channel, uh, when we get a new plane, we always do an unbox uh, build and radio setup. I think we might have done that separately on this particular plane because it was a new release and it was much anticipated. But either way, um, we try to show you the exact setup all the way through. And I think we may have, yeah, we set this up on the NX-8. It would have been one of our first planes. And this is why telemetry is just so dang nice. You know, I could keep flying for a little bit longer, but I'm not gonna push the issue. Look at that, just awesome. And then you can see all the different G-forces. Just a ton of different information. We went to 113 degrees on the ESC. So just lots of different things is really helpful for you as a pilot to kind of determine what's going on. And uh, to be perfectly frank, I've not had a big issue with this one overheating, but some of you guys uh, that are in hotter environments or thinner air might actually run the ESC a little bit harder on this plane. So we've been very happy with it. And even today when I slammed into a thing, a doohickey, which you'll see in just a few minutes, you can see that this plane is still in one piece. And just to give you an idea, I'll go ahead and test my throttle cut one more time. Then we'll pick this up and show you real quick where the damage is. This plane is heavy. It's like almost 10 pounds. So just love this plane. Show them under there. You see where our damage is on the wing? Okay. And then the damage on the back of the fuse. Stay tuned. You can see exactly what we did and you see everything held together through that flight. And I wanted to demonstrate that there's, obviously you can always fix a plane with new parts, but we're here to help teach you guys how to get the most out of this hobby, to squeeze the maximum value out of it. And sometimes squeezing the maximum value out of a tight spot gets you into trouble. So we're gonna show you how to get out of that trouble to a certain degree. And yes, as you can see, 7006S, huge pack huge pack guys when they start put cooling fans on your motors in your airplanes that's when you know it's a big one so huge love it get it while it's on sale and guys come back for more of the Spryan phillips rc we're here for you we've been around for seven years on youtube um what are we like 110,000 subscribers we're so appreciative to you guys especially to the patrons lately that have been helping to support us on a monthly basis if you want to become a patreon just look at the links in the video description below you can help uh, send us a couple of bucks a month whatever it is that that meets your budget and uh, if you don't like monthly support we have paypal and then of course we feel like the most economical way the most equitable way to to really help us is just buy these planes when you like them yes you can buy them when they're on sale Yes, you can use your coupon codes, your RC bucks, whatever it happens to be. Just follow our links. And then the affiliates that we work with, like Horizon Hobby and a variety of other companies, will send us small commissions on the sales that we help to generate. And that's basically how we fund our channel. So obviously there's ad revenue from YouTube and everybody that knows anything about YouTube knows that there's advertisements because you're watching them, guys. And we get it too. Trust me, when I'm going through the comments, I watch the ads too. Super annoying. But at the end of the day, Thank you to our advertisers because you're the ones that help make this all possible. Because if there was no financial incentive, I probably would have been smothered in my sleep by now and uh, it, it would have all been over. <laughs> so anyway, stay tuned. You can watch me crash this thing if you enjoy my pain and suffering, which I'm sure you do. So stay tuned and we'll show you the repairs at the very end, just in reverse chronological order. So stay tuned, so much more to come. We got your back here on Brian Phillips RC.
YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. Look at this, we've got the Draco. This thing's on sale. If you haven't already got a Draco, you need to just get one already. It's amazing. Obviously, this thing has been out for a little bit and it is on sale right now. Not for very much longer, but we took this out of the airplane hangar. Just wanted to show you just how sweet it is. And obviously there's different lighting configurations. I've got that tied onto the knob. If you wanna see how we did that, just look at our unbox build radio setup. Lights off, I usually run it about 50% on the knob and that changes the lights. Of course, you can't see it from the front. Throttle cuts off. Okay, so then we'll do the reverse thrust. Just be careful when you're reversing, show them the tail wheel. If you go backward too much on the tall grass, you might end up breaking that. So just be gentle. And then obviously on the landings, you wanna be gentle as well. But having reverse thrust is very nice when you get into predicaments like driving close to building or whatever it happens to be. Straight lines are usually okay. And here goes nothing. We're gonna go ahead and turn it around so that you guys can see what this thing looks like from the front with the different lighting configurations. That is a big, big plane, okay? I'm gonna come back in the shade. Absolutely gorgeous, obviously. 7006S is what we're flying on, okay? So lights all the way up on the knob, solid. Then you can see the strobes. Then you can see the nav lights kick in and the strobe on the front. If you go up top, you'll be able to see it all. There's one on the tail, it's still in the lights, a little bit hard to see right now. But then I usually run it about here where the tail light's flashing, see that? Then the front light shut off and then all of them are shut off. So I usually run it about something like between here and here, cause I like that front nose flash, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna back taxi and take off right now. Camera crew, you need to come back 10 steps. Okay, that's good enough. There you go. Okay, and then onto the pavement. Whoops. As you can see, when you're reversing, you gotta be a little bit careful to mitigate what's gonna happen to that tail wheel because it is not perfect, okay? And then obviously this plane will take off as short as anything we've had. You guys see that? Pretty incredible. That's 50% throttle, by the way. 7006S, 30C. Just wanted to give you guys a shot from back here. Stay right there, I got you. Okay, coming around. That's so impressive. Take off flaps, landing flaps. We're gonna come around and go right in front of the chicken coop. You wanna take four steps to your right. There you go, perfect, right there. That way you're safe. Okay, go toward the railing on the sidewalk there. Perfect. And what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna come around in the low point here and we'll take a landing right in front of the camera crew. Just to show you the versatility of this aircraft. Look at this thing. Hey, you need to be back behind there, please. Thank you. Look at that, guys. That's a tight area. That's only about 30 feet. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. Get to your uh, over the railing with the camera, but you're safe. Okay. Perfect. Guys, that's what the FAA calls a substantial structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whoa, that was close. Look at that, guys. Vertical. Amazing. I want to try this just approach from the other angle and we're going to see what we got. Better do a couple of practices. Oh yeah, we could totally do that. You able to keep it in picture there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Beauty is this plane will do all this totally stock. There's not even one modification on this. I don't even have the canopy upgrade.
That is so <laughs> cool. You guys can't see it very good, but I just went around the eagle killing zone. Back where you were. Oh man, that is so cool. All right, camera crew, what do you think? Should I try to go under the DAC? Oh man, really? No? Yeah. Okay, so let's come out from the deck there. Or actually, if you want to go up, that'd be perfect. And then you'll be safe. You can give them a different vantage. The gal's talking to me a lot in the telemetry. Okay, full landing flaps here. See if we can land. Let's see if we can land right here. Going downhill. Just some light gusty winds. I'm probably gusting to about five. Okay, so I hit the side of the chicken coop and what happened was it broke right here. It separated along that seam, you see? So that's obviously not good. And then it just kind of damaged the end of the wing right here. So it's actually not that bad. So all I need to do is I basically need to pull this plastic retention, this clip, whatever it is. I need to pull that and get it back around here And then I need to glue this seam. So something like that, okay? So that seam needs to be closed. And then you can see right here, that's what I'm talking about. That's the bad spot. Okay, so we gotta try to get that glued back together and see if we can get that resolved quick. It looks like it just popped this stuff out here. I don't think that actually does anything structurally. It just needs to be put back together because those clear things stick in and all this gets keyed back together. So that's pretty easy to fix. So we're gonna see if we can fix this quick and then continue our flight. Obviously the battery, will switch the battery and just charge out while we're waiting. Um, but anyway, that, that was kind of a bummer, but I can't believe how well it held up given that I straight on hit that thing while I was flying. So a little crush damage here also, but I think we're gonna be okay because structurally everything is intact in terms of the, uh, the parts that hold everything together for the wing spars and everything. So we're gonna go take a look at this and get this fixed right now. Okay, so the damage was contained mostly on this side and then this little red thing popped off too that has tail. It's got a hatch access. That was just a magnet. So it just popped back on and then this thing was kind of popped off too, which gives you access down to the receiver and all that good stuff. So it actually, it just popped off. So there's no damage or anything, okay. All right, so we'll stick that all back on there. And then this here, if you kind of look at what happened, we basically just popped this out. So that can be just popped back, okay? I might have to try to re-laminate that somehow. But then this support, that support bracket sticks in. So it's actually a structural member there, see that? Just like that. And then this is just gonna snap back in like a model, like a plastic model that you would have built as a kid. Okay, so you see, clip, clip, clip. Now they're all in and they're stuck back down together. Okay, so structurally this is sound again. Now I need to pull this hard so that I can get that foam back through. That's my goal at least. So I can push against this now that it's structurally sound again. And then I just wanna investigate and see how bad the damage is. It looks like it's just contained to pulling that back and then drop this back down. There's a structural member here and a structural member here, okay? So we're just getting this around it so we can drop back into place. See, and there it goes right back into place. Because remember, the wing spar takes the load and makes that part of the plane. So this structurally, that needs to be glued back, okay, right there. So that can all be one contiguous piece here. And then this here, this is just a wing spar, right? So that can actually get pushed through. It's sliding just a little bit. So once that's together, then this little bit this little bit, that's probably not gonna be a big deal. We'll probably just leave that. You could use some hot water to take those little bumps out, but I'm gonna try to get 
See, my foam to foam is pretty low right now. So I don't know if I've got enough to finish this, but I've got another tube of this we can open up here in a second. So this is just regular foam to foam. And what that does is it's like mucilage. It's basically, um, you know, it's like, it's gonna booger up real nicely for you. And so the reason I like this stuff for this type of application is the foam to foam is a lot clearer than the mucilage. Mucilage gets tackier quicker. And so there's some advantages to using mucilage, but you see this stuff will poop out and make a big mess, but that's, that's fine because it'll be nice and tacky. But you want to let it work. You want to let it sit and actually uh, chemically react with the air. Okay, so you see I'm kind of squeezing that last little bit out of there. Okay. And then I want to try to do this without making a big mess of the canopy. So I do believe that that, that was glued because you can see there was a glue seam. It's kind of ripped out some of the foam. So we want to want to just let that stuff. Sometimes you can kind of blow it into the cracks and stuff. And then if you look right here, I'm just trying to get glue in the spots where it matters. If you look right here at this angle, then you can kind of see up in there. I'm going to actually get a plane stand, see if we can get this flipped over. All right, so I'm going to try to get this plane stand under here. The Draco is a heavy plane. And the worst part of it is when you damage stuff because it's so dang beautiful, you don't want it to be damaged. And there's not really a lot of great spots you can set it because there's antennas here and details there and just everything is so pretty. You don't want to lose any of it um, if you're anything like me. So I guess in that, in that regard, these type of crashes are extra frustrating. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? That's just kind of, in my experience, it's part of the hobby. When you push the limits on where you can fly, you're going to end up running into more stuff. Okay, so I'm just squeezing that, really getting a lot of glue in that spot. Uh, I believe that is not a structural member. I know it seems like it should be because it's kind of bearing all this, but it doesn't actually bear it. What bears it, the wing is all born throughout this whole thing is like one big unibody. Okay, so then this, it looks like we're probably pretty much out of this glue. So I'm going to go ahead and just get a little teeny bit more here and just kind of work that into the seam because I don't want to open that up anymore. So that's spent. That's what you call a gone. So I'll grab another tube of that. So this is what this stuff looks like. It's, it's a really good product. I, I was concerned about it at first because I had never used the foam to foam product. And uh, I believe this stuff is on sale too, maybe, or it was recently. If it's not, I apologize. Plus, we try not to talk a lot about sales on our channel just because the fact that, you know, we might review this stuff and then here a few months later, it might not be, might not be still on sale when you're watching the video. Okay, so you don't even have to pierce it. But you can see these aluminum, aluminized tubes are really, they'll keep kind of pooping the glue out. So I always like to have a couple paper towels handy because it is likely that you're going to spill a little bit. So the thing that's nice about this, the way that this broke is I can just lift this up and you see what I'm doing? I'm just making room. Okay. There's a little bit of that stuff on there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a very, very small amount of it. You see what I'm doing? Just making a nice bead as I go down. And then I'm just going to basically poop into the crack a little teeny bit. Okay, so there's a little bit all the way down the length of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to just follow back with this just so I don't have tons and tons and tons of that stuff going everywhere. And this, this obviously this repair is just kind of a quick and dirty thing. Uh, this glue here is probably set up enough to where I could push it together. You see how it's all gooped out like that? That's kind of what you want but kind of not because you do want it to snap back into its home position where it's going to relax. Okay. Then same thing over here. I want to get glue underneath this. You see my bug. I kept that bug splatter cause I thought it looked realistic. And, um, obviously God rest her soul. The, the real Draco looks a lot worse than this in real life. So I'm going to just be count my lucky stars that this is all the worst it was. We all hate crashing a pretty plane. It's a pain. And uh, especially when they're expensive, but right now they're a little bit cheaper. So might as well get them when they're on sale. It'll be a less, less heartache if you do run into your chicken coop. Okay, so I'm gonna try to lift this as I pull and just get that push back into place there. And then this, this spot here has got me a little bit concerned because I can't quite get the thing. You see how it's a, all that stuff pooped out? 
when I did that, I'm just going to roll that onto the, just going to roll that onto there. And then I'm just going to flip it around and just roll a little bit of this out. Okay. So throw that out. And then I want to try to get glue and I want to try to hold this all in place just like that. You see that, how it pooped out on my hands? One of the reasons why I like that stuff is it just balls up and comes right off. So you don't have to worry about that making a huge mess of you. Okay. Now, one of my principal concerns about this is I need to be able to press this down and in like that while everything sets up. You see back here how that all pushes out? Mm -hmm. That means we got enough glue in all the important parts. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just spinning this and then I'll come back here and get the bulk of it. Just kind of work that out. It's always frustrating when you crash, but guys, I mean, it is a little bit part of the, the hobby, especially like I said, when you're flying in tight spots, you'll tend to have a little bit more of that. And uh, it's a little embarrassing, but the reality is, you know, we try to, we try to share the reality of this, this hobby with you so you can kind of make some good and important decisions. Okay, so you can see that. So really what I need to do is I need to hold this all together. Okay, so you see how this, we didn't get any glue in that joint. So I'd, I'd really like to see a little bit more glue there. So I'm gonna try to do just a little teeny bit. I don't even know, to be honest, if it was glued from the factory in that spot because I don't think it's actually a load bearing area. And then I'm actually, at this moment in time, I'm thinking about maybe pinning this together in a few different spots, just so that the fuselage is held together. And what we normally do to pin things together, it's a very simple process of using either toothpicks or bamboo skewers. Bamboo skewers are, are bigger. So just imagine like 10 times as big as these. And uh, they're a little bit lighter because they're not as dense a wood, okay? So this, this here is gonna be more structurally important, but we also have wires here we need to be careful about. So I'm gonna try to push this together like that. And I'm just gonna try to pick a spot where maybe there's like a rivet or something like that. And I'm just gonna go like that. And that's all it is, okay? Just a little bit to kind of help secure it together. And then you can break this off you can take another toothpick and you can actually push that in so it hides. If you're careful, you won't get stabbed. If you're not careful, you probably will. But you see, it, it's gonna damage your finish a little bit, but it's a lot better to have that strength there. Okay, so then the next big critical spot is right here. I wanna try to hold all this together, okay? So you see this here? Remember, the glue's gonna be doing the holding. All you gotta do is pin it there while it dries, okay? So I need to make this stop separating so I think I'm gonna to try to pin like this. Now remember, this is not a load bearing thing. This is just a, something's gotta hold it together while it sets up, right? Kind of thing. Ooh, shoot, I missed, that was a bad spot to go. So now I can go at a slightly different angle, see if I can hit it better. Okay, so now I can take a, another toothpick. You see just a bunch of them come in these boxes. So it's a real cheap way of fixing stuff. Obviously you can order a replacement part, which there's no harm in that. But I've just never been a big fan of uh, doing replacement parts on stuff like this. Unless it's like a nose gear or something where you know it's gonna be weak and it's a structural component, okay? So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just picking, I'm just stitching it together just so it, it kind of has a little extra structural integrity on the joints where it's broken, okay? Then we'll go back and clean up some of this glue. So I'm just picking a spot where there's a rivet and I'm just going in, okay? It ain't ever gonna be like it wasn't crashed. It's just gonna be less noticeable. So remember, if we fix this thing so that it's good enough to fly, it's gonna be a good day. Okay, so you see? Then you can just leave that stuff and as you let go, it's gonna decompress less. There's still a little bit of decompression there and I'm not happy about that. But we're gonna do our best to get this pinned back together so it can't relax. Okay, and then that glue, you could actually leave that glue if you want, or you can try to get rid of it. And honestly, I don't know that there's like really a perfect way of doing it. The perfect way is to not crash into chicken coops. And then I'm sure there's a few that are gonna be like, well, don't fly around chicken coops. That's another way you can avoid hitting chicken coops. Don't fly around them, you won't hit them. But uh, there's a chicken coop there. That was gonna be part of the fun, actually. But now the fun you guys get is see me swallow my pride and eat, eat crow and, you know, fix stuff.
Okay, so you see this now, now that I have that all kind of held together, I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna get a different angle here. I wanna try to, I just wanna avoid where this is. I'm just gonna try to go straight in here. And if there's a wire, you just kind of got to throw caution to the wind at a certain point, because if the wire's there, hopefully it'll push out of the way. Because you got a sharp tip, it should just push it out of the way. Okay. You can also try to support this in another way, like wrapping some, um, you know, like even almost like a blanket or something, you can wrap around and pull this tight. You don't want to tie a string because you'll, you'll damage it. Uh, you'll put a line right in the middle of it. Which I mean, obviously, you don't want a line in the middle of your plane like this. You just want a bunch of toothpicks sticking through it. But you see what I'm doing here is I'm just slowly working all these components back into a position where there's just nowhere for it to go. And uh, I think I'm going to find this is the next spot I'm going. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go get a pair of needle nose okay, pliers. I have some. Why do you have those? Because you handed them to me. Oh, I outside. did? That's weird. Okay, so see this? Now I'm gonna grab this. This is the wrong set of needle nose pliers, by the way. Nope. There's a black set in that drawer. It's a little bit smaller. Yeah, those are downstairs. Okay, so you see all I'm doing is I'm just kind of grabbing these quick and just kind of trying to get a little bit better penetration. And this little spot is where I'm really struggling right there. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, it's it's, well, it's not perfect and it's definitely not. I feel like we're getting better and better yeah. a little bit at a time. And the next thing you know, you know, it's gonna be basically glued together to where it's not gonna be of any consequence. And then because the glue joints are loose on this, we're probably gonna have to let this one sit, I bet, because of that glue joint and the other glue joints. So, Trying to kind of debating about how I want to handle that vertical column. I feel like that vertical column could probably use a little bit better support. Mm. And then I was thinking about this amount of glue is kind of, kind of a lot. See if I can get a little bit of it off of there. See, this stuff dries clear, which is nice. Okay. Obviously, it'd be better if it was, you know, not glue at all, but glue is better than broken. Okay, so this is the other spot I'm struggling with right here on this column. This column, I'm just trying to get it so that, show them from the front of the window here, right there, right there. Okay, so as I push down on this, that closes, mm -hmm. okay? I'm struggling to get that to pin together, okay? Because I really want that pinned in more than one angle. Do you want a skewer? No, too big. Okay. Not enough material to support it. Mm. So usually when it's a wing attachment point, I'll use a handful of skewers, but this is just too small. There's not any material to hold it. So kind of torn. Obviously the electronics aren't damaged at all. So we were uh, fortunate in that sense, in that regard, but I just wasn't so fortunate in the fact that I didn't, I got a little crush point in the wing, but I think it's gonna be all right. It's just this one spot that I can't quite get that, that load to relax. And I think I need to probably pin it again now that things are starting to get tacked up better. And this is kind of a critical time in these repairs. You gotta get it done before all that glue sets up, okay? And this one's gonna be, ooh, it's kind of a, just an awkward spot. Cause really I need to, I need to come in like this and probably hit another angle. You know, that's just the way it's gonna have to be. It's a redundancy that's gonna give you your strength. Okay. So you get a couple three pins in there, it should hold it together. See, as I let go, it just relaxes even less than it's yep. been. So maybe I just need to do that one more time. And Mike Patey's probably rolling over in his, he's not in a grave, but he's probably rolling over on his couch laughing at this repair, <laughs> thinking, Brian, I would have just redesigned a new part and uh, built it out of carbon fiber on CAD, you know, in five minutes. And then I would have gone out and fixed it properly. Well, 
I'm sure you would. That is, okay, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe one more, going at an angle back the other direction. Yep, so there's gonna be some strength here, but it's just strength where we didn't want it to be, you know? It's like, you didn't wanna have to see that negative view. Okay, so you see how this has got like a, like a round point? Show them from the other side so they can actually see here, camera crew. See what I'm doing? I'm just pushing up it. And grab this. Okay, see, and it just pushes into the foam. So it's not ideal, but it's better than, better than having not as much strength, in my opinion. Okay. Again, this is just all about trade-offs here. I'm trying to hold all this structurally so that it holds still. Now let's show them a, a shot right here, right here, right there. You see that, guys? Now hold steady. When I squish it, it barely moves now. So we're getting closer and closer every time. And the idea is at the end of the day, when we're done with our repair, I want the repair to be structurally sound while the glue sets. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be aligned. Cause then like the wings and everything stay in proper alignment. Plus then this will bear some of the mechanical load. I just want to make sure that it doesn't break off as a result. So what we end up doing is we end up taking this unibody construction and tying it all back together with pins instead of just glue. The glue and the pins work together to end up with a pretty strong little repair. Um, I mean, obviously it's always better if it's not repaired, you can just order the parts. But uh, you know, if you're like me, it's all, about, it's all about when. It's not about what, it's about when. That's one thing you find out real quick when you do this hobby is that a lot of it is time dependent and you know, when you're busy, adult with responsibilities you gotta you gotta be available to do it when you got time and that's you know the cardinal rule is crashing a plane on a nice light you don't want to crash on a nice night you crash like when it's crappy out so you can go inside and fix it and not feel bad about it okay so you can see this hardly any play and compare it to the other side look play play see play see the play i'm trying to hold it still see there's play and there's play. It's actually tighter on my side now where I've got my repair. Now, obviously it looks a little bit less good on my side, I would say, but it's definitely gonna be sound and that's structurally sound. Now let's come over here and give some TLC to this back end a little bit here. See, I've got two points here. I'm gonna go, I, I'm doing it from the bottom on purpose because I feel like it's gonna be easier to hide. I'm gonna come up here under this rivet or I'm, I'm under, this, under this rib and I'm gonna come back and stitch the other direction. Okay, see, just back like that. One more stitch point, and I think we're gonna be good. Now you can glue these in if you want, but I found that you don't actually have to glue them. The glue just kind of gets in the way. So this is gonna be one of the more intimidating repairs when you have a beautiful plane too. So just remember, it can't be worse than an unflyable plane, right? If you do this and you hate the way it looks when you're done, all you have to do is just break out another 600 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever from you know the money tree and just go ahead and go ahead and take care of it that way <laughs> or you can do this and uh it should be no problem at all if you had a small pair of side cutters this would work better but since i'm too lazy to go get them i'm gonna cut them like this okay so i'm gonna cut these all okay now a few of them you notice i pushed all the way in because i could get away with it okay you can pull them towards you. See, like in this spot, I don't wanna push any deeper and I'm still gonna be pushing deeper, okay? And I hate getting the, this, this thing is so thick, you know, the thickness of the, the head of that. I'd really like to break that if I could, I don't think I can. So I'm gonna come in here and press into the foam and cut. <laughs> hate that. But as you can see, the repair is really shaping up. Look at this, guys. Look at this, guys. We've got a little bit of flex there. And you see that one moves in and out. I don't know if that's going to be good enough or not. So here's another thought. Now that we have this kind of held together, I'm going to take this and I'm going to show you one other trick that, that can be very effective. And it can also be not very effective depending on the application. You see how that's right on the rivet row? Rivet row? Rivet row. Sounds like I'm talking to a dog or something. See this? I got some glue on there. Remember how I said earlier, you don't have to glue them. 
Well, you don't have to, but you can. So I'm just gonna spread that on there. And then I'm just gonna force this back into the hole where it came from. And just let it, I'm just gonna let it guide right back where it came from. I'm not gonna try to re-manipulate it in a different angle or anything like that. And then I'm gonna do that on the ones that are up here because I can, okay? And I just pushed it a little bit beyond. Same thing here, I'm just gonna grab it, kind of take note of the angle where it comes out. See what I'm doing is I just put it along here just a little teeny bit, right? Just one little row, okay? Any more is gonna be a mess and you're just gonna waste it. And yes, I'm gonna spread that with my finger this time just to show you. You wanna get a little bit of residual, see? And then when you push it, it'll push in around the, the tip where it comes out. Okay, so you see that? You can spin it in, sometimes that helps too. See how it sucks it back in the hole? Okay, then I'm gonna take, the tip of this is round. That's what I was trying to point out earlier, but these are so crappy they have play on them. Down you go. And then look at that. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but it's a heck of a lot more perfect than it was 15 minutes ago. How long has this been, 15 minutes? 23. So guys, when you come to Brian Phillips RC, you come to watch me screw up and do stupid things. So obviously that's where we are today. And I'm actually almost satisfied with this. I'd like to see a little bit better adhesion here, but that will come with time. You see this, how you can pull that apart? That will come with time, okay? Now, the other thought I had was I could put the wings on, but I mean, honestly, I feel like I can just kind of hold this together right now. See how that kind of pushes away and everything? I don't like that. But I'd like this glue to just have some time to set up. And so the other thing you can do is you can come in here and peel out some of that extra if it's giving you problems. But remember, if you peel too much, you're gonna pull off the paint, okay? But you see how this, once you get a little bit of residue on there, it pulls the paint, it pulls the, the glue right off. See how it's perfect on the plastic? And if you get it in a spot where the paint's real thick and sturdy, it just pulls it off and it makes it perfect. But then sometimes it'll peel off the paint and make it look terrible and very imperfect. So you just have to make a decision. You have to kind of use your best judgment. And if you're new to the hobby and you think, hey, I'm never gonna need to repair my plane like that, you're in the wrong hobby because you're gonna be repairing like crazy just like everybody else. Um, also, I mean, this, this crash was avoidable, obviously, um, as, as are most crashes. But I can definitely say this, that was a fun crash if it wouldn't have been, you know, so destructive. See that one just poked back through. I wanna change that angle just a hair. I'm gonna go back and pull that back and I'm gonna change the angle to go in toward the can cockpit a little bit more. Okay, because I feel like I'm not getting good purchase. And yes, that was pretty destructive to the lid, but that's gonna get me more purchase on this. Don't be afraid to just get in there and do it. Sometimes you just gotta do it. In fact, I like a full length. Mm. I like a full length on this one. Cause I feel like that's gonna give me really good bite. Yep, that's down. That's really giving me good bite. Okay. And there's already residual glue in there. So we're good on that. Okay. All right. So now when I push on this, See, as, as we get that glue to dry, you see how it doesn't come back anymore? It just kind of like stays down there almost. That's what we're gonna have at the end of this. Show them right here, right there. Get that to focus. Okay, now when I push down on this, you see how it stays put instead of coming back right away? I'm a little bit bummed about that. I feel like maybe if we took a second, we might be able to get that out of the way, I wonder. The toothpick? Yeah. Mm. No, this. This little piece of whatever foam that's right there oh. just happens to be kind of in a bad spot. Yeah. I'm gonna take this toothpick and I'm gonna push this one in just a hair, hair more. Whoops, it slipped on me. Okay, so I'm gonna take the broken one so I got a little more surface area this time. You just gotta figure out whatever's gonna brace you the way you need to be braced. Oh, that doesn't wanna push. That's a good thing though. Okay, so then I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna hold that tight. Now I'm gonna hold down on the wing real hard as I press this in. Okay, so that didn't work. Well, I guess we're not getting that one anymore. That's fine. That means that's got a lot of glue on it and it's gonna hold tight and I'm satisfied with that. It also means that all this stuff has kind of come together where it needs to be. It looks like 
possibly this thing, I might be able to pull that screw out and try to get a little something to hold this down on the front. But no matter how you slice it, this thing is coming together to where it's pretty much sturdy again. So now we're gonna look at the back. These ones should be a little bit easier because if I'm lucky, I'll just be able to break them. See, I can just break them like this. Just support right at the point where it enters. And then we'll just uh, spin them off. Okay. See how I'm supporting this here with my... Ooh, that one didn't break very close, did it? I'm going to cut it. When you cut them, they're a little bit harder to press in because there's a kind of a flat, crushed surface. Okay, I'm having visions of the cats getting curious and eating those things. Makes me nervous. If you guys have cats, you know what I'm talking about. They do stupid stuff like crashing into chicken coops. Wait, never mind, that was me. They were playing in there today. They were? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, that's what happens when spring comes around. Everything gets really fun. See how it split? That's not what I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this without making a huge mess, but it's possible I'll make a huge mess. Yep, there we go. Just push it till it's flush. Now remember guys, this is not a real plane, okay? It's just, well, it is a real plane, it's just small. But what I mean is, it's not like this has to be carrying passengers, you know, to save their lives and stuff. I mean, granted, I don't wanna run into my face either, just like the next guy, but uh, this plane is is going to be pretty much as good as new when we're done. It's just not going to be quite as pretty as new. And you'll note that we've got this nasty, nasty seam here now, which is unfortunate. But I'm actually okay with it. I know that some of our um, some of our peers on on YouTube will, you know, they might talk about a crash, but they never share, you know, how to fix stuff. This is just part of what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. So hopefully, it's helpful to you guys. And you can get your brand new Draco that has not been crashed into any chicken coops on sale right now. And we'll make a link so that it's easy for you. And we'll show you what battery we used. It was a 7,000 success. So far, so good. I think we're doing all right on this. Um, I'm not 100% certain that I would be willing to take this up and fly it right this second. But I mean, if you wanna just give them a quick once around, um, I'm actually gonna go get the wing and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so you can see here, the wing got squished a little bit here. And so obviously the rest of the wing is perfectly fine. Everything was golden. This thing is just an amazing model. So I'm gonna show you a trick. So we're gonna just rinse our hands while this gets warm and hot. And we're just gonna let it go real hot. And when it gets real hot, we're gonna basically dip that in and see if we can get that little bump out of it. This might not be hot enough. We may have to boil water. And if you don't have hot water where you are, if you have a microwave, you can use a microwave with hot water. It gets pretty hot though. I know, you can see the steam maybe. I can see the steam. Yeah, I can too, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna let this much. work. Some, there is another trick too, and that is to set, set a rag under your faucet and let it get extremely hot or something like uh, foam, you know, like a, a sponge. Not foam, sorry. Oh, probably some type of foam. You see how it's kind of relaxing that out? Oh, that is so hot I can barely touch it. So I'm just gonna stick this on top of that for a minute. Now, one, one risk you run is that you'll actually get the rest of the foam around it hot to the extent where it's gonna bubble up real nasty. So you gotta be a little bit careful about that. But guys, just look at that, look at that. That bump is getting smaller. Smaller by the minute. And if you have an aerator in your faucet, it's gonna make this process worse. So again, if you really want this to pop out all the way, look at it, it's getting smaller and smaller, okay? Remember, all we're trying to do is just make all those little balls of foam expand a little bit, and it actually does work. 
Because this wing is otherwise undamaged. I, I couldn't believe it, actually. I thought it was going to be way worse. Okay, so then sometimes you got to kind of help it coax it out so there's no pressure here. And then just let it work some more. And you'll notice just kind of making a little mess with the water. It's not a big deal. Water's not going to hurt anything unless it does and you drown in it. And then it will. Okay. There you go. What am I hitting? Oh, it's that thing. Carbon fiber. That's actually, that's, oh yeah, that's just flopping back and forth is all. So I don't know if you guys can see, that was popped out a lot more than it is now. Now I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. And then, you know, like some people would say that's probably good enough. And I would probably be in that realm right now, just with the number of planes we've got. And even though I love this plane, I don't want to like overdo it. You see? So there's not really any big, huge issue there, but I just want to show you if you do want to make it pretty much perfect, get yourself a cup of water, get it as hot as you can on the stove or get it as hot as you can in the microwave. We'll show you how this works real quick. So I run it for like two or three minutes and water that's in the microwave will sometimes not boil until you open it and you realize it's kind of boiling. Um, so just be careful. You can get burned doing this. But what I wanna do is I wanna basically pop this back out so you guys can see just how perfect you can get it. Now, you'll also notice that this is gonna discolor the paint a little teeny bit. It's gonna make it look like older than the other paint that's around it. So when you do this, it's a little bit of a trade-off. You have to decide if it's worth trying to get it perfect or not. And then same thing right here where we've got these like sort of stretch marks, if you will, or whatever you wanna call that. And then let's show them inside there. See when I press this? There's just a little teeny bit of deviation. And then I can tell that one of my toothpicks is popping up and I don't know which one it is. There's like one that I can't tell where it is. It's probably this one here. So I wanna try to push that down just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit more. You're not gonna be able to get a shot of it. You just have to take my word for it. Okay. So I'd rather have that, have better penetration. Now let's, let's grab a towel for safety. Okay, so it should just kind of help insulate us from the heat. Okay, you ready? You see how it's bubbling in there? Give them a shot. See how it's bubbling? Nope. Show them. It doesn't go through there. Well, oh yeah, yeah, there, you can see, see how it's see bubbling? Okay, now watch out before it gets totally evaporated. <laughs> okay, so it's bubbling. This is why you gotta be real careful because this is gonna be hot, like it's boiling hot, okay? So now I'm gonna take and Reposition this in my hand so I don't get burned. I'm gonna do it very carefully. Kids, if you're doing this, do it with your parents' help. Okay? And I'm gonna quickly cool the rest of it, okay? I'm just kind of rub my thumb over it. And you see it's, it's not gonna collapse totally. I think that's as good as we're gonna get it, okay? So now the other option, of course, would be to cut that out. That is just way overkill in my book. But you see how it's got these little bumps? That's what you want. You want to release that, that pressure. So it goes back to like what it was when it was first in the mold. So you actually get it beyond what it was the first time it was in the mold. So now this little opening here, you don't really have to do this, but sometimes it's kind of nice. Like you might be in a more critical spot where there's a little bit more load. In my case, I'm just going to pull this open and just kind of hold that along the seam and just let that glue go down into the crack. Okay, see how it's on top of the crack instead of having seated down in there? So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this, pull this open, and then walk that down in there. You see? I'm just gonna walk it down in there. Just kind of get that stuff, give it a little encouragement and just let it walk down in there. And remember, this is warm right now because it just got covered with all that hot water. Okay, and then same thing, we'll just kind of carefully flip this up, try not to damage the control surfaces. Because remember, at this point, we're dealing with basically cosmetic damage. So I don't want to damage any of the real components. 
Okay, so just pull a little bit of that. See what I'm gonna do here? I'm just gonna pull this open and then just slide that through, get that glue in the joint. Okay, so I can throw that toothpick away. So once you're done with that, in my case, then it just becomes kind of a waiting game. Do you want to, you know, do you want to try to encourage it along a little bit more? Do you want to tape it? Or do you just want to leave it the way it is? And that becomes a big question mark here. So just wiping off the excess here because this thing's in otherwise pretty good shape. Same thing here. I just want that glue inside. Okay. See how it poops out a little bit? See how I'm holding it and just letting it poop out? When I let go, it relaxes back. Just kind of manipulate it until it gets it about where you want it. And then you can take and just wipe a little, little bit of the excess off. Now, the other thing I've done in the past on a lot of repairs that are similar to this, I'm gonna get out of the sun here so you guys mm -hmm. can see, is I will take and put a piece of tape across this if I wanna go right back to flying, okay? Um, but in this case, since I can't really fly it, I'm just gonna kind of be patient. Now, it would be nice to pin that just to kind of keep that sharp edge there. Mm. But you see there's still a little teeny bit of recess there. But you can see it looks like where that split happens to be a seam point anyway, which is kind of interesting. You see the bubbles of mm -hmm. water coming out? So anyway, those water drips are not going to make a difference. It looks like this did get bent a little bit. You see that? How it got bent in just a hair? Just got twisted a little bit. If you're gonna twist that straight, better mm -hmm. take it out of the wing. I'm gonna try to lay this down upside down. Okay, so we're just gonna grab this so it squares it, and then we'll just give it a twist. Give it another twist. Okay, so that's heat treated, so it's gonna be, have one heck of a memory on it. Okay, so lay it flat on the counter. Does it wobble? Nope, it's square. Okay, so once that's square, you can just drop that back into the wing and it receives it just like that. Now, if you have one of these that wants to come out too easy, another trick you can do is you can take this piece and you can give this a twist. See, I'm gonna grab this and just give it a quick twist. See, all that does is that makes that have a point where it's gonna have some pressure on there when you push it in, watch what happens. Okay, now it's in there tight. See how that worked? Pretty good. All right, cool, so there you have it, guys. I mean, I don't wanna say zero to hero, obviously, it's more like, I would say on a repair like that, that was like hero to 15% worse than it was before. Because <laughs> this is a great plane. And if you guys haven't experienced a Draco, man, it is a good plane. I just feel bad that my piloting skills have allowed for crashes and not just one, but the last two videos. Now, I'm not sure if you guys saw them in that order, but I've crashed twice in a row. And that, I think that's a springtime thing. When you're, um, when you're flying, Spring seems to be the time for crashes. I don't know why. When you've got a little bit more experience, uh, it seems to be when I always crash. Well, you've been flying a lot more than when it's... During the winter? Yeah, really cold. Right. More exposure. Yeah, it's just, it's just part of it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this thing off again. I'm just realizing I might be able to get up in here. See how my hand is up here? Yep. It'd be nice if I could get up in there and kind of knock that, that white that white piece off. That'd be I real nice. I might be able to reach easier. Nah, okay. I'm gonna use forceps. Okay. Hemostats. So if you guys don't have hemostats yet, this is a tool that'll make your life easier. Okay, just like this. Then you can reach into otherwise strange, unorthodox positions. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to I won't be able to get it with that, but I can hold a toothpick or a Q-tip. Okay, so I can clamp this on there like this. I should be able to walk that in there if I'm not too crazy. Oh, nope, I gotta bring it back at this angle, okay. <laughs> oh, his head's in the way. Dang it, Mike Patey's head is in the way. In the way. Get out of the way, Mike. Okay. I wonder if they laser scanned Mike for that. <laughs> okay, so you see this? I'm just gonna see if I can kind of, oh yeah, got it out of there. So you just knocked, knocked it out loose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as much as I wanna say, 
Uh, it's perfect. It's definitely not perfect. It's far from it. But what I can say is it's a lot more perfect than it was when we crashed into the chicken coop a few minutes ago. So let's show the people right here. If you want to come back over here, show them here. And you see, as every time I push this, it just, it just basically stays where it needs to be now. Because as I press on this, there's nowhere for any of that stuff to go. Mm -hmm. So we're in better shape than we were. It's definitely not perfect. And then I could have been a little bit more careful and sparing with this glue. But I mean, I could also go in there and probably just touch that with some red paint. You wouldn't even know except for the fact that we put it on YouTube. But yeah, this seam here, that was a seam I was real worried about. And you can see, look what happens. See this, how it rotates and lifts the plane. See this? That, that's the only place where I feel like it's separating and I'd like to be able to prevent that a little bit more. And also it looks like my, this thing needs to push through. If you look at, if you look at it on the other side, but just stay on this side so I don't have to trip over you. See what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just use that to push it in. Ooh, that's gonna break it. I'm not careful because that's going to stop my wing from going in there. So I'm going to find a flat surface on this tool, preferably if I can push hard. I wonder if that's part of the problem I was running into mm. with getting that thing through. I don't know if it's going to cause a problem though, because the, uh, the way the wing attaches, if you look at this, Yeah, that's gonna push into it tight. Cause there's, oh no, yeah, there's a wing spar that goes into this and into this. So this is gonna be made it up with that flush. So I do need to push that through. So I'm glad we caught that. Cause I don't know if maybe there's a little bit of glue in there or what, but I do need to push that through. This needs to push through. I wonder if a crescent wrench would give me a better purchase point just to push with. I got this thing too. These uh, lineman's pliers might work good for mm. that. Bigger flat surface kind of. Come over here so you can see. See, just got a big flat, flat spot. Hmm. Just having a hard time pushing. Just want to get something where I can push, but I don't want to push and break that. Carbon fiber is not infinitely strong. It's strong in the right direction. This is not the right direction. Oh gosh, I'm pushing hard and it's not moving. Mm -mm. I wonder if that's just the way it was glued from the beginning. It's possible that it was, or maybe I'm hitting over here. Ooh, I wonder if that's what it is. Yeah, look, see what it is? Oh. I'm pushing against the plastic over here. You see yep. the lip? Put that camera toward my sh right shoulder. Mm -hmm. I can see it. Okay, so. What I need to do is I need to try to pull that carbon fiber spar forward a little bit and see if I can get that to line so that I can pull it. It just doesn't seem like it wants to move. I don't think that was part of the crash though. If you, if you fed the- Oh, there it is. There it is. I'm, I'm actually almost lined up already. See, I did move it. Yeah, I'm just, it's, yeah, see, I did move it. Yeah, you see that? Mm -hmm. There it goes, it's in. Woohoo! Okay, Ooh, that's okay. good. Okay, so I'm glad I caught that because that would have been one of those things where we'd be trying to ram the wing in and we're like, why doesn't this fit? Yeah. And before I knock that in the sink, I'm gonna put it down. So that should pretty much get everything back to ship shape so that we can fly with this thing again. But now we just need to let that glue set up, which I normally wouldn't I wouldn't worry, I would just go fly, but since I really, really like my Draco, I'm gonna actually let this set up. And then this, I think I'm gonna just leave it because I'm afraid if I put water in here, I'm gonna have a really hard time shedding away from this opening. Mm. Um, and I don't think it's gonna be enough of an advantage when that puffs to actually get that to look good. I think we're pretty much as good as we're gonna be on that. And then obviously like the glue and everything feels like it's holding together. And 
I can't say that there's any other spots that I really feel like we're going to be in big trouble if we don't do something with it. I do feel like that would have been nice if I could get that. To Ooh, you see, that's, that's what you, you want to avoid right there. See what I did mm -hmm. when I slipped? Oh, dang, that does happen. So you gotta be, gotta be careful. And I slipped and I knew that I was gonna eventually slip like that. That's uh, not so bad. Worst things have happened in life. So anyway, uh, without further ado, I think this is as good as we're gonna get it. So the next time we see it fly, which we will do a proof flight. We always try to show you proofs when we're done with, you know, like a, this isn't really a major repair. But it's a relatively major repair because it's in a structural component. Um, but here on Brian Phillips RC, we want to help you guys to go from where you are now to where you want to be, which is obviously flying, crashing, and repairing your own aircraft and getting to results that are maybe slightly better than what you could have before you saw the videos that we put out. But at the end of the day, you know, everybody's going to crash. And as soon as you start flying in this hobby, you're going to need some of these skills. Um, probably sooner than you think. If you've been flying and you're a veteran pilot and you really have a lot of experience, even you guys that are coming back, uh, you know, maybe from a few years off, you're gonna, the new media, the media of foam is not something you guys are maybe used to. So we wanna help bring that to you. The other thing too is there's been a lot of people that have um, had some trouble with this carbon fiber in here um, on the early, model there was a handful that had issues there i haven't had a single issue with it i know there's some modifications out there uh, that add some steel in there i i haven't had a problem with that so and i mean i just crashed my plane tonight so i mean even after crashing it that doesn't seem to be an issue for us so but again it's the way you crash um when zane and i were flying he broke his but it was a really bad landing so and I think what ends up getting people in trouble is throwing thrust reverse on early, which I did it tonight too, and I don't know why I did that. Um, and so as a result, I just misjudged the opening. So sometimes you get a big plane in a tight spot and you can do some really cool, fun stuff. And then other times you get a big plane in a tight spot and the tight spot wins, which is what happened today. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them, but just remember a lot of times we're filming these, you know, like a couple years before you see it. And so I can't remember all the details. We try to cover as many of them in the video as we can. Um, also on this one, uh, given the circumstances of just, you know, having had a crash and everything, we're gonna actually give this glue some time to set up and then we'll be filming. So we don't need to mis mislead anybody, but unless this stuff sets up and the sun is still out, which it doesn't look like it's gonna be, it's about six o'clock in March 1st. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be dark, like in a few minutes. So we probably won't be able to do another flight tonight, but we will get a flight as soon as we can. And we'll probably just plop it at the end of this. So again, we don't try to mislead on our channel. We just wanna give you guys uh, as much information given the circumstances that we run into, because we figure that in this hobby, if you're flying, you're crashing. And so we're gonna try to teach you, but you know what? I just wanna demonstrate how good these planes are and then I go and crash into stuff. So. I don't know if that's a self-refuting argument or what, but to be honest with you, that, that crash would have taken out most planes. So I'm actually really happy with the way this thing turned out. I, I was thinking it was gone. So that's why we paused, because if I totally killed the plane, I was like, eh. Plus I needed to have a moment, which is fun. So anyway, stay tuned guys. Uh, we'll have this thing in the air in no time, and hopefully you guys will be as happy as I am that it's totally good to go. Stay tuned.